everybody, Boxing Ball coming back at you again today. Um, I got Slinky here. I want to talk about Jags and, and Neuro. I've done a video on this in the past, um, but I just want to retouch up on it. You know, I've seen a lot of questions been asked. I've seen a lot of people um, talk about different ways they handle it and stuff like that. And I got Slinky with me, and she's uh, a Jag, a Caramel Jag. And she's got pretty, I'd say level 6 Nero. Um, sometimes it's a level 7. You can't, right now she's being pretty calm, so it's not too bad. But she does corkscrew a lot. Um, it's, right now she's actually being pretty calm, so it's not going to act up as bad as it normally does. But anytime I clean her cage or I pull her out of her cage to clean, um, it'll act up really bad when I put her back in. Um, also, anytime I feed her, it'll act up. Um, but that don't bother me. Why? Because she eats, she sheds, and she poops just fine. She also climbs on her vines. Um, she gets around just fine. As you can see, she's corkscrewing a little bit there. She acts completely normal. Um, she doesn't know that she's special. Um, she's actually a really good girl. She does everything that any other carpet python would do. The problems with that you can have and something you gotta worry about when you have a jag with such bad neuro is is, is drowning and things like that. If they get if the water bowl's too big and they get in it and they can't flip right up, they can drown. So you don't wanna if you have a, a car python like this that's stuck in shed, you don't want to soak them in water. What you want to do is get like a pillowcase, um, wet it down with really warm water stick them in that, close the pillowcase up, put them in like a little shoebox tub or something like that, let the humidity build in there, and that way you don't have to worry about drowning. And that'll get the shed right off if you have any problems with that. That way you don't have to soak them, because I know a lot of people soak snakes to shed. That's a great alternative when you're dealing with, you know, spider ball pythons and other ball pythons that also have the, the neuro and with jags. Um, one thing I want to tell you is every single jag has a neuro. There's not a jag that doesn't. I know people say, well, I see people sell jags and they say, no neuro. And that really drives me nuts because every jag has neuro. There's levels to it. And the, the other thing about neuro that you got to realize when it comes to jags is why one jag might not show big size of neuro. It might be a level one, we'll say. Um, that don't mean that it can't all of a sudden trigger and go like this. I'm going to show you this video. Priest, if you need to zoom in, you can. Um, this is from my buddy. He's graciously sent me this video. Now the jag that I'm going to show you here is, is a beautiful jag. Um, it never showed big size of neuro. It was probably a level one on neuro. He rehoused it into a, a much larger enclosure, a enclosure that was appropriate for its size and this is what happened when he did it. I don't know if you guys can see that real good, but you can see the core screwing happening. Now this is a jag that I've said never showed big signs of neuro. It had it, but it was a level one. He put it in this new enclosure and it did this. It's, a, it's, it's just a stress factor type thing. Um, no one really knows what causes it to act out other than what we hypothesize, which is like put them in an enclosure, feeding them, doing things like that, tends to get them excited, and it just is like a circuit overload. Um, now, this is a jag, once again, I said never showed any signs of big neuro. It was probably a level one, and, and then this happened. And this is what can happen to, to your jag. So that's why when I sit there and I, I see people say, they sell jags and they're like, no neuro. It's like stop lying to make a sell. Be honest with people. This is this can happen. You know, this you can have a level one and it can go to a level ten. Now, I, the other topic I hear people talking about it really just I, I want to cuss. I'm a, I, just so you guys know, my favorite word is the f word. Um, I really hold myself back on the videos when it comes to my language because I don't want to get flagged and I want people to feel educated even though I am a big cusser <laughs> as my kids can tell you um but they want to call their animals okay why did you get a jag 
to breed if you're just going to turn around and call the animal. Now, I understand if you have to put one down, if it, if it's not, if it can't eat, it can't shed properly, it can't poop, it's kinked up, and it's so corkscrewy that it cannot function. Okay, I understand that. But just for anybody that showed that, like an animal like this, that put such a beautiful animal like this down because she's got a level six, in my opinion, uh, wobble or neuro is insane. Um, because she's a great pet. She's very loving. And I don't mean loving in the sense like you get from, you know, obviously your kids or your wife or your dog, but she's gentle. She doesn't squeeze my hands real hard. She's easy going. I can just reach right in and get her right out. She never has any issues with me. So when you, so there's no sense to put them down when they're like this. You know, I understand it can be a little bit harder to sell a snake that's like that. Um, I get that. But that's the risk you take as a breeder. That's your responsibility. I mean, you just have to take the responsibility and if if you're gonna breed Jags this is something that can happen and and so therefore you need to take the responsibility and, and own up to that and keep them animals until you can find them an appropriate home uh, as, sell them as a pet um, I could breed her if I wanted to I probably will I don't know yet I haven't completely decided what if I'm gonna breed her or not and that's another thing just because she's got Nero like this does not mean that all the babies will have Nero as severe um, also, breeding Jag to Jag does not make the Nero any better or any worse. What you can have is leucistic babies from that that will die in the egg or will die within a week or two after they're born um, just because their lungs aren't developed properly. Um, but it's not going to cause any more Nero. So you just got to take responsibility when you get these and understand that when you buy a, a Jaguar or Carp Python, whether no matter what combination of Jag it is, whether it's a a pure coastal jag or a, a mix of any sort this is a possibility even with a jag that shows none I keep re-emphasizing that why do I keep going back and saying hey just cause your jag doesn't show Nero right away um that's because like I said I've seen several people sell these jags and say wow it shows no signs of Nero well it, it can and, and 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 they all do um I have jags that you would look at if you didn't own a bunch of carp pythons be like that that carp python is completely normal it doesn't show any signs no but it's there if you pay attention to the way it might tilt its head or the way it might approach things um just little subtle signs they're always there it's always there it's just not to the degree that she has it you know so that's what i'm saying you got to be aware of what you're buying when you get into certain morphs and and this is one of the issues that Jags have it's just something you can't breed it out that's another question I get all the time well can I breed it out can I breed it out can I breed it out no you can't it's something that you cannot breed out of out of them it's something that they will have um there's nothing you can do to make it any better or any worse it's it, it is what it is you know so you know, the other issue, you know, when it comes to, like, Jags with Neuro Hersa, with her severity is when it comes to feeding. She misses a lot when I put the rat in there. Most of the time I just set it in there and she'll just walk, she'll just walk over there. Yeah, she'll slink her way over there and get it. Um, other times she'll come up right up and she's like, yeah, give that to me right now. She'll miss. So when you go to feed a Jag, when you go to feed any snake, you should use tongs anyway. I, I, I can't stand that hand feeding stuff. Um, that's just an accident way to hap ready to happen. I don't mean like you're going to get seriously hurt or anything like that, but that snake's wasting valuable energy wrapping your finger up or your hand up thinking it's got prey. Now you got to hurt its teeth, and you're going to rip teeth out, you know, hurt its jaw, trying to get it out, get it unstuck from you when you were just trying to feed it. So use a tong when you feed, please. It's just common sense. Um, but when I do tong feed her, sometimes she misses. It might take her two or three strikes. It's just because she just she hones in on it, but just that accuracy is just not there, and that's just because of the neuro, you know. So this is just a, a topic I wanted to kind of recover. I'm not covering, you know, everything about the the jaguar gene as far as like the different morphs and stuff like that. I just wanted to retouch up a little bit on the neuro, you know. Don't fall for that. Well, it has no neuro. That's that's a lie. All jags have neuro. It's in every single jag. 
Um, now, the other thing is about responsibility. You know, do I breed a female like this that shows this much neuro? For me, I would say yes, because her babies aren't going to come out like that. You just don't know. I've seen people that breed jags that show one to two level neuro, and they come out with major head wobbles. Um, so, you can, but at the same time, this, if you're going to go to a reptile show, and this is, I want to touch on this because this is an issue that breeders are having in the UK, um, because people are bringing animals like her that have this severe neuro to shows, and, and you shouldn't do that. Um, shows, you know, people are there to, to look at your snakes, but you can't believe how many people are there to also judge your snakes, just like on YouTube videos and on Facebook and Instagram. It's, it's, a, the government's are always looking for a way to ban an animal to, to make it harder for you to own what you want to own. So would I bring a snake like her to a show? <laughs> no, I would not. No, no, certainly not. I would not bring an animal like this to sell. If I was to sell and I got some jags now and, and so far they're all doing well, um, they're all like level one neuro, but say I had a jag like her for sell. Would I sell her as a breeder? No, I would not. I would sell her or him as a pet. I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to do that. Now I say, I, I might breed her. More than likely, honestly, I won't. She will always just be a pet and something near and dear to our heart. I say I would, but the truth is, I, I probably wouldn't. Just because of my own ethics and responsibility, you know, I just want her to live a long, happy, healthy lifestyle as much as she can. And enjoy life so I probably wouldn't add that to stress of breeding her um but you got to take responsibility when it comes to selling these animals that are like this too you can't just take these to shows and you can't just I hate that I hate when people bring animals like that to shows because it makes the hobby look bad yes it's part of them but at the same time you got to have responsibility and and when it comes to these Jags like this, I see so many of these jags being sold at pet stores, and people buy them and have no clue, and then pop on one of my YouTube channels and and see it, and they have all these questions, or they show YouTube videos and like, why is my snake like this? What happened? You know, the education needs to be there for these animals, and 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 it's up to all of us that own jags to, or any animal that has neurological to explain to people like, look, this is part of them. This is what can happen when you breed them. This is what can happen when you own them. You know, that doesn't mean you should shy away from them, but just understand what you are getting into. I know a lot of people that, that have gotten out of JAGS completely because of this. they just tired of dealing with the different neuro stuff. As for me, I absolutely love JAGS. JAGS are probably one of my favorite morphs. Um, as you guys know, I have a ton of them. Um, so they are probably my favorite morph of car pythons and all the stuff you can do with them. So just know going into Jaguar carpets that this is the issues that you can come across, that you can deal with, and you never know when it's when a 1's going to go to a 10 or when a 10's going to go to a 1. Um, it's just something to be aware of. So hopefully I, I didn't ramble too much on this video, and I know I repeat myself a lot, but I just want you to get a good grasp of what you can be dealing with. Um, I'll retouch up on this topic, on, and I'm sure in a year or so, um, when I get, you know, a different, when I get different questions and people, you know, wanting more in-depth descriptions, you know, as far as like, what can I do and stuff like that. Well, you know, those are stuff that I'll delve into probably within the next couple months, you know, on what you can also do to help keep your Jag more calm. Obviously, one thing is keep it in a smaller cage, you know, keep its stress levels down. Don't handle it, her a ton. I don't handle her a whole lot. Um, I don't have to. She's actually sweet, but you know, just things like that. I'll delve into on another topic. I just want to touch on, you know, be aware of this is what you can have when you have jags, but they're worth it to me. Anyway, this is Box and Boa, Slinky and Priest. I'm gonna come back and do a shout out video here in just a minute. You guys have a good day. This is Box and Boa saying peace. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below, and you know I will get back to you. You guys have a positive day.